Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Constant versus Variable Slope, Part 1. So, in the last lesson, we learned how to calculate the slope of a line. And one of the core ideas of that lesson is that when you find the slope of any line, you can use any points, any two points on the line, uh, and you can also reverse the order in the calculation of using those points going in reverse order to figure out what the slope is. And no matter what points you use, you will always get the same slope. And that's because that is what the definition of a line actually is. If you really think about it, if you draw just any line in some random you know, slanted direction, then the slope here is what we call constant slope. So I'll put constant slope. And that means if I pick two points here, I'll find some slope. And if I pick two points over here, I'll find the exact same slope because even though the line has continued to go up, slope is rise over run. And as the line goes on, it's the same ratio of rise over run along the entire path of the line. That's what a line is actually. It's a set of points so that when you connect the dots, you have the same constant slope between the points. That's really the best definition or one good definition of what a line is. But we can take all kinds of other interesting paths that are uh, obviously not lines. What about something like this? Very famous path. Uh, you know, this is part of a parabola. We'll talk about parabolas later. But obviously, this thing does not have the same slope at all these different positions. What about other weird shapes? Like, you know, something that goes up and then down and then around like this. Obviously, these things are not lines. We can see that visually. But one way in which to think about does it form a line or not, is to ask yourself, do you get the same slope if you use two different sets of points to try to calculate the slope? So for instance, if I were to go over here on this curve, and I would pick two random points down here, then the line that would go through these two points would look something like this. But if I pick two points that are up on the top part of the graph, like here, then of course I would get a line that is much steeper. So here, if I calculated the slope of, of the line using these two points on the curve, I would get a lower value of the slope. But if I use these, I will get a much different higher value. And of course, with a crazy shape like this, the, you know, if I use any two random points, of course, the the line would be going all over the place, so I would get different values of the slope with any two points that I would pick. So this is called variable slope. So variable slope. Variable just means it changes. Something is variable when it changes. Constant slope means it's just a line. All lines have a constant slope. No matter what points you pick, you always get the same slope. Variable slope means if I pick different points on the path, I'm going to get different values of the slope. And as I told you, when we learned about what slope is, I told you that, hey, we're taking the stepping stones into advanced math. Calculus is built on the concept of slope. And the reason it's built on that is because we can use it to analyze more complex paths, right? Like the shape of a rocket trajectory as it goes into space looks something like this. This is obviously not a straight line. It launches and it goes over and starts to go into orbit. But what we can do is we can break this path into tiny little segments. We can analyze the slope. You know, here we might get a slope that looks something like this. We can analyze the slope a little bit farther when it's a little higher in the atmosphere and the slope is a little different between these two points. You see, we can analyze a complex path by breaking that path into little segments which form little tiny line segments. And then we can get a good approximation of what the curved path is doing by just understanding the slope of the line because we can break the path up into tiny little line segments. That is what calculus is. That's why it exists to help us learn how to analyze more complex shapes. So constant slope, that's what a line is. Variable slope, that's pretty much any other path that's not a line. So here we have some data for problem number one. We have x values of this data. We have y values of this data. This data can represent anything. X could be maybe time and seconds. And y could be, you know, uh, the altitude of a butterfly. So zero seconds, the butterfly is two centimeters in the air. At one second, the butterfly is at three centimeters in the air. At four se uh, seconds, the butterfly is six centimeters in the air, and so on. And these x, y values can be written down in terms of points. Zero comma two, one comma three, and so on. And what we want to do is figure out, uh, we're going to, you look at a graph of it as well, but try to figure out, does this form a constant slope situation where the slope is not changing, in which case it would be a line, or does it form a variable slope situation where the slope is changing and not always the same? So what we do is we calculate the slope twice. First, we'll use these two points, 
and then we will use these two points and see what we get. So for the first slope, it's going to be, of course, the same thing, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the rise over run equation of the slope of a line. And we're going to use these two points here. <clears throat> so what we have is you can subtract in any order you wish. You need to subtract the y values first. I'll go 3 minus 2. So here we have 3 minus 2. And since I subtracted this direction, I need to do the same thing here. 1 minus 0 for the x values. And by the way, if you're confused on what I'm doing here, slope of a line, go back to the previous lesson. We covered this extensively. This is kind of the follow-on lesson. So 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 minus 1 is also 1. And so the slope of this line uh, between these two points is equal to 1. All right? So what I can do is summarize that by basically saying, okay, between these two points right here, the slope was equal to 1. Now let's go recalculate slope using two other random... I could pick any two points I want. I'm going to choose to take a look at these right here and figure out what the slope is here as well. So I'll calculate the slope again. Again, I can subtract any direction I wish as long as I'm consistent. I'll go the y values, 10 minus 7, because it's y2 minus y1, and I'll go the same direction, 8 minus 5. So 10 minus 7 is 3, and 8 minus 5 is also 3, and so the slope again comes out to be 1. So right here, I figured out that the slope between these two points is 1, and the slope between these two points is also 1. And here is a spoiler alert. If I pick these two points and calculate the slope, I will get 1. If I pick these two points over here, I'll get a slope of 1. Think about it. 10 minus 3 is 7, and 8 minus 1 is 7. 7 over 7 is 1. What if I pick these two points? 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 minus 0 is 8, so 8 over 8 is 1. No matter which two sets of points I pick, I always have the same slope. The slope is not changing. So what do we say? We say it's a constant slope. And when we have a constant slope, we believe it's a line. If we take these points and plot them, 0, 2, 1, 3, here's 0, 2, 1, 3, and the rest of the points we've also plotted again. Remember the biggest point we had was 8, 10. Here's 8 for x and 10 for y. If we draw a straight line through them, what do we have? We have a line. Of course, everything is in a line, and the reason we know it's a line is because it's a constant slope. It's just reinforcing to you to know that when you see a line plotted, then you know the slope has to be the same at every single, between every sing, uh, every separate pair of points you pick uh, along this line. You'll always calculate the same constant slope. So what we want to do now, since we've covered the situation when it's a line, is work problem number two and see what happens when, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert, it's not going to be a constant slope. Let's see what that situation looks like. Okay, problem number two, here is our data right here. We have only three data points, 1, 0, 2, 3, 3, 8. Yes, I've already calculated the slope between these points. You have to forgive me, I actually had a power outage, so I'm kind of refilming this lesson, so I had a couple things written down. But still, if you basically just ignore this, you can see that we have data here. Now, what does it represent? I don't have anything labeled. It could be uh, anything, it can represent anything in real life. This could be the time in hours, and this could be the temperature in a room, zero degrees at one hour, two hours later, you know, total of two hours uh, after we start measuring, it's at three degrees, and three hours after we start measuring, it's at eight degrees, let's say. It's hard to figure out what this is looking like just by looking at the raw data, so we'll calculate the slope between the first two points and see what it is. The slope between those first two points, y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1, right? I'll just subtract 3 minus 0, I'll, I'll subtract this direction, although it doesn't really matter, and then 2 minus 1, I'll go the same direction. So 3 minus 0 is 3, and 2 minus 1 is 1. And so the slope here is 3, and that's why I wrote down that the slope between those two points, if I were to draw a straight line between these two points, is equal to 3. Now let's figure out what the slope is in the next case down below. Let's, instead of taking a look at these two points, Let's take a look at the slope between these two points down here. Again, I can subtract however I wish. I could go this way or this way. Let's do it differently. 3 minus 8, subtract the y values. And since I went this way, I'm going to go 2 minus 3. So 3 minus 8 is actually negative 5, and 2 minus 3 is actually negative 1. And so the answer, negative divided by negative, is positive, but 5 divided by 1 is 5. And so you see the slope here is equal to a positive 5. Right? 
And you can see right away that the slope between these two points is less than the slope between these two points. And you can drive the point home by taking a look at the slope between these two. You don't have to do this, but you could. So let's just get a little bit of practice here. 8 minus 0 subtracting the y values, and 3 minus 1 subtracting the x values. We get 8 on the top, we get 2 on the bottom, and we get a slope of 4. So if we look at the entire thing, from here we get a slope of 4. So how does, how does this make sense? That if you pick different points in this set of data, that we get different slopes. Well, we have a situation in this problem, it's not going to be as extreme as this, but basically we have a situation where when we plot it, we're not going to have a line. We'll have some sort of curved path. So let's go and see and reveal kind of what this data looks like if we were to draw it, and you'll be able to see right away that it cannot form a line. So the first point is 1, 0, and then 2, 3. So here's 1, 0, and then 2, 3, and then the last point is 3, 8, which is up here, 3, 8. Now you can see that if you were to draw a straight line directly between uh, these two points, you would have a slope of a line that would go through those points that would look something like this. But if you draw instead a line that goes through these two points, you can see it's much steeper. So as we get toward the bottom of the graph here, the slope is less, here the slope is more, and that's actually what we figured out. The slope between these two points was 3, whereas the slope between these two points, the upper two points, was 5. So this was a less slope, and this was a larger slope because it gets steeper. And if you were to consider all the little points in between these dots, like if I, I only have three points there, but if I had collected more data, presumably I would get all the points that kind of lie in between, and I would draw hopefully some sort of smooth path that would be, as time goes on, the temperature going up, 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 up. But you can definitely see that there's no way that this can form a constant slope. It is a variable slope. That's the point of this, variable slope. Now, when we get into stuff like calculus, right? When we get into stuff like calculus, we can use the tools of calculus that you'll learn much later to analyze the situation a lot more. Because in real life, things do, do not, usually do not go in a straight line path. Very often things curve. You can think about the motion of a ball when you throw it. Is it a straight line? Well, right after you release it, it looks like it's pretty straight. But as gravity starts to curve the path, of course, it bends over and it's not a curved path. If you zoom in on any part of the path of that ball, very, very tiny, it looks like it's going in a straight line, but the overall path is, of course, changing. So what we do in higher math is we take these curved paths and we break them into very tiny little segments that we can approximate by a little tiny straight line. We know the, the slope of the little tiny straight line. And then we can use that information to analyze the entire path by putting it all together like that. But for this lesson, the point is just for you to understand that if you calculate the slope using two different points and you get different numbers, then it's called variable slope. When the slope, as in the last problem, is constant, we call it a constant slope, and then it must then form a line. So let's wrap this up, take it down. We have one more, and we will conclude this lesson. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. We have X and Y column data here. So independent variable, dependent variable. What could it represent? Leave it to your imagination. We can instead talk about the elapsed time, and then this is uh, uh, how far going down a mountain uh, you know, we are. So, or it could be the water level evaporating from a cup. Let's say at zero, when we start taking a look at this thing at zero hours, we have nine meters of water in a lake, and then one hour later, we only have seven meters, and two hours later, we have five meters. And so over time, we're draining the lake, let's say. And so as time goes on, the water level in the lake is going down. Now, what do you think? Is the slope going to be positive or negative? When things are going down with time, the slope is negative. You're losing something. So we know, we suspect, the slope should be negative. But let's see, is it a constant or a variable slope? So we have to pick two points here. We can pick any two points to try to verify this. Let's just pick the top two points uh, to calculate the slope for the first slope here. So the slope is going to be, of course, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can subtract in any direction I wish. I'm going to go 9 minus 7, subtract the y values. But I have to go the same direction. I have to go 0 minus 1 on the bottom for the x values. 9 minus 7 is 2, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And when I divide this, I get negative 2, which is exactly what I thought. I thought I would get a negative slope, 
In fact, I do have a negative slope, and so the slope here is negative 2. This means I go, and think about what negative 2 means, it's, it's a negative rise over run. It means I go down 2 units for every 1 hour of time. Down 2 units of level in the lake for every 1 hour of time. That's what it means. Now let's see if this is a constant or a variable slope. So we'll go over here, and we'll figure out what the slope is between these two points. Now I could pick any other two points I wish, but I'm going to pick something down over here. Again, y2 minus y1, I'm not going to write that again. Just subtract the y values, 3 minus 1, but I have to go the same direction, 3 minus 4 here. Subtract the x values. 3 minus 1 is negative 2, and 3 minus 4 is po I'm sorry, negative 1. Now negative divided by negative, let's see here, what, I made a mistake. 3 minus 1 is positive 2, sorry about that. I have a positive 2 on the top, and here I have a negative 1 on the bottom. And so same thing, I get negative 2, it's exactly the same slope, negative 2. So that means between these two points on a graph, if I draw a line between them, the slope would be negative 2, which means it would be going down. And over here, between these two points, if I just look at the slope between these two points on a graph, again, the slope is going down at exactly the same rate. So let's take a look at what this looks like on a graph. And you can see that it forms a nice straight line, and we can just verify 0, 9, uh, 0, 9, 1, 7, 2, 5, 1, 7, 2, 5, and basically all this data is just plotted. And when we basically figured out the slope here, we got negative 2. And when we figured out the slope between these two points, we also got negative 2. And now we can see the full picture of all the other points, and we see that because it forms a straight line, the slope everywhere is going to be negative 2. The slope of negative 2, if you think about it, is you can write it as negative 2 over 1, right? You can write everything as itself over 1. That means you rise in the negative sense. You go down, right? And you run in the same way as normal. So going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And because the slope is constant everywhere, we know it is a line. So this is a constant slope. And the slope everywhere is negative 2, and because of that, it forms a line. So, bringing it back home from the beginning. We said at the beginning that all lines, because of their nature, have a constant slope. If you pick any two points on the line, you will always get the same number, just like we did in the last example. Whether the slope is positive or negative depends on what the problem is, but the slope will always be the same if it is a line. If it's what we call a linear relationship, means a line is what is formed when you draw it. However, lots of things in real life are curved. You know, this is exponential growth of bacteria. The amount of bacteria that, that uh, you know, grow as, as things multiply, it is not a line. It is an exponential growth. It goes faster and faster and faster as time goes on, right? That's why when you first get sick, you, you don't feel too bad, and then suddenly, whammo, you feel terrible because it's not a, a growth along a line. It gets much, much, much steeper. And by the way, the reason it gets very, very steep is because once you build up a lot of bacteria, they're all dividing then you have more bacteria, which can then all divide again. So it doesn't go along a line, it gets faster and faster as time goes on because you have more and more bacteria, each one of which can then divide again. So in the beginning it's slow, but then it gets very, very, very fast uh, here. And the slope is different, higher and lower along those paths. Of course you can have different kinds of crazy paths. But as I try to tell you throughout this whole thing, I want you to be motivated. I want you to know why do you care about this stuff. And the truth is they don't tell you that early on, but the reason you care about it is because we do have a lot of things that do function as lines and as linear relationships in real life. But the things that aren't lines, we can actually use calculus to use these ideas of slope to model them by breaking the shapes of the motion up into little bitty line segments. That whole idea is called calculus. It's built on what you're learning right now. We have to know this to understand that. Promise me, uh, I promise you it is that simple and it is that, you know, uh, direct. That is exactly why we learn this stuff. So, practice these. Make sure you understand the difference between a constant and a variable slope. Follow me on to part two. We'll continue building your skills.